The teachers here at GJ do amazing things outside of school, but recently Mr. Baker went above and beyond when he and his family adopted two children from Uganda, a country in Africa. The Baker family welcomed them into their warm home over winter break. Lillian was found as an infant, like a couple days old infant in a plastic bag um, next to an electrical plant. Um, they found her and took her to the police and the police took her to the orphanage. And then Caden was found um, just laying a couple days old as well um, next to a golf course outside of the court. Both the kids are adjusting awesome. Um, definitely the English is not there yet. They know a couple words like baby Jesus, chicken, mommy, daddy, <laughs> and where we going. Um, <laughs> that's their new favorite one this week. And tighten up the game. Tighten up the game. Thanks. Tell the camera, say tighten up the game. 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 It's definitely a lot of transition for them. Um, one, we didn't speak the same language, so it was hard to communicate. Like, we really, they never had parents, so they don't understand what a mom and dad for life is all about. They're still learning to trust us. They're still learning to have eye contact with us, that kind of thing, but they're doing great. Um, I feel glad that I have a new sister and brother, and, it, and I like to play with more people than just one. You can just see, I mean, everything is new to them. Everything um, from car rides to, you know, this getting in the swimming pool. So it's interesting to see. Uh, it's interesting to see them at a, at a playground, you know, just look at stuff. You know, we're like, go ahead, go ahead. And, you know, we automatically assume just because we've been raised with that, our kids have been raised with that, that they know what to do and they don't. So that's one of the adjustment things. We have a crazy amount of blessing that's coming uh, through these kids. And I, like Jen said, if, we can only, if it's only two that you can touch, then we feel like we were called to do that. And those, that, that is going to make an impact on our lives as well as their lives. The holiday season is quickly approaching, and finding a unique gift is becoming more and more difficult. Instead of buying a DVD or a video game, have you considered going handmade? At Go Fish, you can buy a unique gift with a special meaning behind it. I had the opportunity to speak with Don Paget about the message behind Go Fish's merchandise. Well, the gentleman that started Go Fish, uh, he went on a short-term mission trip to Peru. And when he went there, one of the things that really impressed him was the fact that the people that were there in the marketplace were very talented people. But what touched his heart was the fact they were very, very poor. And they just didn't have very many people that were in the marketplace to buy their things. Kurt actually goes into the villages away from the cities and that's where he's met the artisans that he buys from. At Go Fish, we have everything from $1 for uh, the friendship bracelets, earrings from $8 up to $24, $25. Uh, we have soaps that run from a dollar up. So we have a wide range of different price points so that really anybody from, um, from a young person to somebody that wants to spend $500 on something, we have that kind of spread in price point. One of the things we want to do is we want to invite people to come to the store. First of all, to rediscover the art of handmade. We, we've lost that and everything is manufactured and we don't have that part in, um, usually in the shopping market anymore. The other thing is, is that we like to think that what we have is gifts with a purpose, which means you're not just buying something for somebody to give to them, but you're also helping somebody else that uh, needs an opportunity. And that's what we're really about. We're about giving these people opportunity to provide their families with the simple things that, that you and I are able to have here. With all these great gift ideas, consider helping out the less fortunate this holiday season. After all, that is what it's all about. Reporting for ENN, I'm Chelsea Pierce. Rachel Dubendorf may seem like your ordinary student. She maintains a good grade point average, is involved in extracurriculars at her school, and hangs out with her friends on the weekends. However, Rachel is very different in the respect that she gives an immense amount of time to her community. So much, in fact, that she is our top community service volunteer at Jenkins with 1,177 hours. I volunteered at the SPCA since I was 13 um, with 
Paws with a Cause. I fostered a service dog and I volunteered in Panama at a spay and neuter clinic. I received the most hours fostering the service dog. He lived with me for 13 months and I trained him and had to socialize him so he went everywhere with me. All of my service hours have impacted me because I, don't know, I feel like they've made me a better person. Um, but also I know that they're going to help me later in my life because I want to be a vet. So for getting into vet school and then just having the experience that I've had working with animals, I know that'll help me later in life. Welcome to Warrior Dash, America's most insane race. I'm here in beautiful Lake Wales at Triple Canopy Ranch. Let's go take a look around. Are you guys excited for the race? Yeah, yeah we're excited! Woo! Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with Ryan and Hunter, and they just finished the Warrior Dash race. How was it, guys? It was really fun. It was awesome. I loved it. Pretty freaking cold. experience here in Lake Wales and it was about a three and a half hour drive for us so we didn't know what to expect when we got here and um, now that we're here we feel the energy it's so awesome oh my god there's a gorilla behind me ah! I think that's about the scariest thing I've seen all day well I've had a lot of fun at this year's warrior dash make sure to check it out next year reporting for ANN I'm Alicia Griffiths On November 19, 2010, there was a new addition to Lakeside Village, Yogurt Mountain. Since then, it's been the hot spot for all ages. We had the opportunity to go inside and take a closer look. We are more of a healthy alternative to ice cream with the frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt is just a, a healthy alternative to uh, ice cream because it contains less fat and less calories. Uh, most of our yogurt is either fat free or low fat. It also contains probiotic bacteria, which helps in the body. It aids other bacteria in your body to help fight infection. Um, and like I said, all our, all our yogurts like that, so. Pay by the ounce works by, uh, you, what you do is you just grab a cup and you can fill uh, the cup up with as little or as much yogurt as you would like. And you put whatever toppings you want in and everything you put in the cup counts towards the weight of it at the end. Basically, to sign up for our rewards program, you can come into the store and put your cell phone number into our Palm Rewards program when you cash out at the register. When you sign up for our rewards program, you will get special coupons and promotions uh, from Yogurt Mountain, whether it's 20% off, 10% off, and I know if you come 10 times, you get a free 10 ounce yogurt on your 11th visit. I would just say it's, it's, a, really, it's a really fun atmosphere. It's a, a fun place to be. Um, I think customers enjoy it as much as we do working here. Um, we, we try to put on a good atmosphere for customers to be involved, just, you know, creating their yogurt and if they need help, you know, or want to try out something, we, we basically just, you know, help them out in, in the friendliest manner possible, so. You can enjoy Yogurt Mountain every day of the week from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. and on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you haven't been here yet, make sure it's on your list of things to do. I'm Victoria Valenti, reporting for ENN. The Polk Theater came into existence in 1928 when Lakeland's population was merely 15,000 and it was considered a rural community. Johnny e. Melton, a businessman, made the initial plans for the proclaimed movie palace. 
However, after realizing the large amount of money involved in his plan, he sold it to the Public Speeder Corporation for around $300,000. They settled on an Italian architect, J.E. Cassell, and he adorned the theater with box balconies and windows to give it a townhouse feel. However, most noteworthy is the starry night on the ceiling of the theater to give it an atmosphere that is unheard of in modern theater. The Polk Theater opened its doors on December 22, 1928 for its first film, On Trial. 2,000 of the 2,200 tickets were sold for the 1 p.m. matinee within the first hour of the box office opening. Since then, the theater has tried to stay with the times, leading to a full restoration completed in October of 1999. However, like all historic buildings, it will continue to be worked on as the years progress. New history is being created all the time. Southeastern University is using the Polk Theater to make their full feature film. We had the opportunity to find out what's going on. And this semester, we started a brand new class called the Feature Film Class. And basically what we're doing is we're getting most of the film students together and everybody that we can get. And we're making a feature film. It's, it's a murder mystery type deal and we're shooting it here at the Polk Theater, and uh, my position is key gaffer, so basically I'm just taking care of all the lights, making sure we don't break any, uh, break any lights or trip any breakers or anything like that. Lakeland's pretty great about shooting because there aren't too many laws about like permits and things like that, and it's a complete honor to work in the Polk Theater. I mean, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Elvis Presley has headlined here, and we're working in the presence of the greats, and it's a beautiful space, and it was a privilege and an honor that they let us use it for this film. I think the best preparation that I could have gotten from Southeastern was specifically because Southeastern's film program has been small and developing. Um, a lot of people would see that as a negative, but I like the fact that it forced me to show a lot of initiative. Um, I had to, if I, if I wanted to be on a production or do a production, I had to go out and find it because um, the school was not providing that kind of thing. This is the first time that our school has been in an active role, like this is a class. A lot of the people in the crew are class members. But generally, if you want to make films or be involved with films, you have to do it aside from class, aside from being a student, and you have to do it yourself. It develops in you a um, kind of a unique, dogged determination to do what you want to do, and it, it cultivates a very strong work ethic. For more information about the theater and special events, go to polktheater.org. I'm Ryan Elliott reporting for CNN. Have you ever been driving down a road under construction and you see the workers lying down on the job? Well, if you're driving past George Jenkins, you won't see that happening here. Lakeland Highlands Road is going to be under construction until fall of 2011, but the section in front of our school currently looks like a war zone, which should be completed in six to eight weeks. Students can now expect there to be heavy traffic and lane changes, which will alter the morning drive here. We spoke to a couple of students and staff here at George Jenkins High School to see what they had to say about this. Well, the traffic out here is uh, in front of the school is pretty bad, you know. I come here and turn off a 540 every single morning and all I see is, you know, just backed up traffic and I think it's uh, pretty pointless and I think it's also kind of dangerous because I, I always see like many potential wrecks. Uh, so yeah, I think, it, I think it affects the, you know, students driving here. Okay, according to the construction company um, that is working on Lakeland Highlands Road, the turn lane will be complete probably in another month. Um, there, there's a chance that that may be delayed due to um, the weather or just some problems that they may come up with um, that they didn't foresee. Um, we communicate changes to parents uh, once we receive them. We usually get a, a weekly or bi-weekly email um, as an update from uh, the gentlemen that work with the construction company. And when we do, uh, Mr. Thomas will either do a connect ed to parents, uh, do an announcement to students, and send an email to teachers. We gave students a few days to adjust. Um, we allow a few students that came in late uh, into class, but after about three or four days, we're not allowing any more students in the class late. Remember, our goal with um, not allowing students in late is not to disrupt the curriculum. So students, remember to leave your house a little bit earlier, that way you can make it here on time. This has been Christopher Cordero reporting for ENN. Many people have wanted to change the world in some way. 
if it's spreading peace or ending war or trying to help out all these third world countries. Everyone may not be able to start their own foundation, but you can start little by helping out your local community. Founded in 1977 by Carl Warnick and Jim Welch, the Lighthouse Rescue Ministry set out to change a little of the world it can reach. Its mission, to serve the last, the least, and the lost. If you are struggling financially, you can get food, you can get clothing, you can get furniture. All for free, all you have to do is apply. Um, it's this really great avenue for us to get out into the community and, um, and help people avoid becoming homeless. Uh, during the holidays, we give out food boxes and um, toys to families in the community. Last year, in 2010, we gave out over 1,500 toys um, and, and several thousand food boxes um, just to people who needed help preparing Thanksgiving meals or providing toys for their kids. Um, so it's really neat all the ways we can get out into the community, we can meet people, but we can also serve people here at home. Um, we're pretty full at the moment at our residential facility, but we're always willing to interview and accept new people. Um, and we're always looking for volunteers. So if you ever want to come through and meet our staff and, and hang out with our residents, there's tons to do on campus. And, um, and you just need to go online and apply, which we have it all set up on our website already. Now this is where we can benefit both ourselves and others. Are your clothes too small? Do your shoes not fit? By donating items such as these and many more, you provide the needy with a new set of attire. We can all try giving back to those who have less. As some people say, one man's trash may be another man's treasure. Reporting at Lighthouse Ministries for ENN, I'm Mallory Jordan. Picasso's Cup is a contemporary pottery studio located here in Lakeland. It may not seem like much until you walk by. Luckily, it's filled with a lot of fun and creative things you can do. Picasso's Cup is a nice place to bring a date or throw a party. It's even great for kids of all ages, including us teenagers. This place is literally decorated from ceiling to floor. They have a variety of ceramic pieces to choose from, along with lead-free, non-toxic paint for your designs. Picasso's provides all kinds of tools, such as paintbrushes, sponges, and pencils. They also provide stencils and idea books for those who are very artistic. Artistic or not, it's the heart put into it that counts. You turn in your projects to us so that we can fire them in the kiln, and we put a glaze on it so that it's shiny and that you can drink out of it if it's a cup or a bowl or something like that. So we ask to wait about a week before you pick up your pieces. Uh, well, besides the pottery, we have mosaics, which is just broken glass art. Painting at Picasso's Cup is very relaxing, so the next time you're looking for something fun and creative to do, be sure to stop by here at Picasso's Cup, located at the Lakeside Village by Cobb. I'm Carla Sanchez, reporting for ENN. Hey guys, I'm Alex. And I'm Amber, and as you can tell, we're not at our normal place of sweet delights. Yeah, I was looking around and I didn't see any sugary food, but I did see adorable animals. Yeah, we're here at Polk County Sheriff's Office Animal Control where they house animals, both dogs and cats, for you to adopt. This facility responds to almost 37,000 public requests ranging from animal bites to even domestic disputes. They also take in strays they find on the streets and animals that have been abandoned. The Polk County Animal Control Shelter holds animals for four days if they are untagged and seven days with a valid tag. Cats and kittens are $40. Dogs that are five months and younger are 40. Dogs that are six months and older are 70 because those animals also include a heart rate test before they leave. Once you've found an animal that you wish to adopt, they'll of course bring us the paperwork. Um, you would fill out an adoption contract. It's typically about two pages long. It goes over the basics of taking care of them, spoiling them rotten, following all your laws and ordinances and all that good stuff. Some of the things the animal comes with, of course, is the first round of shots, including distemper shots, dogs and cats both, microchips, rabies shots, which is good for a year, rabies tags, and of course, they are spayed and neutered before they leave the facility. The animals here are not guaranteed anything is one reason. We can't hold them forever. Um, most organizations or pet stores, they can hold an animal until they find a home. Shelters like Animal Control, SPCA, they can't. They can't hold them forever. So it's very important that people adopt from here. It gives those animals a chance. It really does. 
If you are looking for ways to help out, donations are accepted in the form of money as well as through blankets and other dog and cat needs. You can also volunteer at the shelter. You must be 15 years of age or older and fill out a form to get approved. You can help with grooming, data entry, or even photography for their website. Besides donating, another way to help out is to adopt. In 2010, only 5,266 of the 25,542 animals handled were redeemed. This means that 19,459 animals were euthanized at Animal Control, which is 76% of the animals handled at that shelter last year. Those animals were either taken from their own homes for no reason of their own or because they were strays and never reunited with their families. However, there is still hope. Saving a life is just around the corner. The Polk County Sheriff's Office Animal Control is located off of Winter Lake Road in Lakeland. The kennel hours from Monday through Saturday are from 10 to 4. Come by and check out a cute dog or a cute cat. And maybe even adopt one. This is Amber and Alex reporting, reporting for, for ENN. ENN.